Hi everyone, welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel where we primarily discuss all things eye health related. I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell and today I wanted to make a video geared towards high school and college students or really anybody contemplating a career path in optometry. I graduated from the New England College of Optometry in 2015 and I've been practicing for over seven years. I've seen a lot of changes to the profession happen over this time, both good and bad. And I wanted to give you an honest representation of the profession to hopefully help you decide whether or not a career path in optometry is right for you. Let's jump right in. So what does it take to become an OD? I usually answer this question by saying it's about eight to 10 years of additional schooling and training after high school to become an optometrist. Optometrists start their initial training while pursuing their undergraduate degree. Most optometry schools require specific credits in math, science, human anatomy, and physiology. You'll also be required to take the optometric admission test. This is also referred to as the OAT. This is the standardized entrance exam for any prospective candidates applying to optometry school. Think of it as sort of the MCAT for optometry school. Having some exposure working in or shadowing an optometry practice is also important when applying to any school or college of optometry. This experience gives applicants a better understanding of what optometrists do on a daily basis. Today's optometry school curriculum encompasses four years of rigorous coursework in the areas of optics, physiology, anatomy, pharmacology, eye disease, refraction, and clinical examination techniques. This includes didactic coursework as well as clinical training and externships. After completing all four years, graduates are also required to take the national board examination as well as individual state examinations for licensure. Many of today's optometry school graduates also complete an additional year of residency training in a particular area of interest. This can include specialty contact lenses, vision therapy, ocular disease, or low vision. And a quick side note, good listening and communication skills are a must, as we spend most of our days in clinic engaging with staff and patients. Also, a commitment to lifelong learning is crucial, as new research is constantly changing how we diagnose and treat different conditions of the eye. Pursuing a career in optometry can be extremely rewarding and open a lot of doors professionally. The profession has evolved immensely over the past 30 years. Today's doctors of optometry are the primary eye care providers in our country, diagnosing and managing a wide variety of ocular disease and pathology. In addition to prescribing glasses and contact lenses, today's ODs have a plethora of clinical tools and diagnostic imaging capabilities at their disposal. Some common eye diseases that we diagnose and treat are macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. We also have extensive knowledge and training on systemic disease, as various chronic health conditions can lead to sight-threatening changes inside the eye. It's incredible what can be detected on a routine comprehensive eye exam, from chronic disease such as diabetes and hypertension, to neurological conditions such as multiple sclerosis, stroke, or even brain tumors. This is an example of how optometry can be a great entry point into the greater healthcare system. We refer and co-manage patients with numerous other health care providers, including primary care offices, urgent and emergency care settings, endocrinologists, rheumatologists, and neurologists. It is our job to ensure a patient's acute and chronic disease does not affect their eyes and vision. In most practice settings, unless a patient needs eye surgery, the primary care optometrist will typically follow the patient for all of their eye care and vision related needs. Some states even allow optometrists to perform minor surgical procedures, such as laser treatments for glaucoma or the removal of bumps and lesions from in and around the eye. We see patients in a variety of settings, including community health centers, VA and IHS hospitals, private practices, and commercial settings, just to name a few. There are also a variety of non-clinical career paths that ODs can take as well. These include academia, research, consulting, writing, or giving CE lectures at various meetings and national conferences. Another neat thing about optometry is it gives you a portable skill that allows you to give back to the community through various outreach opportunities, both domestically and abroad. Two organizations that I've had awesome experiences with doing this are Vosh and OneSight. And as far as average salaries go, every year, Review of Optometry puts out an annual income survey. And in the 2021 report, it showed that the average optometrist salary was over 180,000 up 14% from five years ago. I personally think this number may be a little on the high side, but then again, maybe I just don't know enough optometrists. So now that we've talked about some of the positive aspects of optometry, let's take a moment and look at the main reasons why people may stay clear of a career path in optometry. 
I feel there are three main reasons here. One, cost of education. Two, perceived market saturation. And three, disruption from online sales of eyeglasses and contact lenses. These are all very valid concerns. However, they should not be deal breakers if you're truly interested in becoming an OD. In fact, over 10 years ago, when I was considering a career path in optometry, these were all issues on the table as well. So let's start with point number one, the cost of optometry school. As of 2020, the average student loan debt for graduating optometrists was $180,000 per the American Optometric Association. If you have any outstanding debt from your undergraduate studies, this balance could easily exceed 200,000. I was recently browsing various optometry school websites from around the country, and it seems that annual tuition rates range from about 45,000 to 55,000, excluding other living expenses such as housing, food, and entertainment. Some schools offer significantly discounted rates for state residents, and regardless of where you're from, these programs do offer the option of becoming a resident and receiving those discounted tuition rates at some point in the program, usually after the first year. Optometry students also have various options for helping finance their education and tackling their student loan debt. Common programs include military scholarships, Indian Health Service loan repayment, or public service loan forgiveness. I also recently found out that various companies are starting to offer new grad optometrists extra stipends for their student loans as part of their benefits packages as well. Point number two, market saturation. This is a valid point of concern when considering a career in optometry. It was talked about way back when I decided to become an OD and it's still a hot topic today. There are currently 23 schools and colleges of optometry in the US. And depending on who you talk to, some people think there are too many schools, other people think there are not enough. Even with more schools and colleges of optometry continuing to open, when you take into consideration the trends in our country's aging population and increased prevalence in ocular disease, there is still a considerable demand for primary eye care services in our country. And according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are 40,000 optometrists and 18,500 ophthalmologists practicing in the U.S. today. There's going to be a shortage of about 6,000 ophthalmologists by the year 2025. Optometry is very well positioned to fill this void, especially with the expanded scope legislation being passed throughout our country. Despite many advances in the healthcare industry, access to routine eye care remains a logistical challenge for many Americans living in rural settings. According to the American Optometric Association, 39% of U.S. counties have access to an optometrist, but not an ophthalmologist. And an additional 12% of U.S. counties do not have access to any eye care provider at all. In rural parts of the country, it is not uncommon for patients to drive four to five hours round trip to see an eye care provider. I've spent my whole optometry career practicing in rural settings where patients drive well over an hour just to see me, let alone another hour or two to the nearest ophthalmologist. For those of you that don't mind living and working in a rural setting, there will always be numerous career opportunities for you in optometry. There are tremendous healthcare needs in the rural parts of our country. And point number three, disruption from online optical sales. Today, about 20% of contact lenses and 14% of eyeglasses are all purchased online. This was revenue previously going into brick and mortar optometry practices. As our world continues to rely on convenience and technology, online optical sales will only continue to grow. Fortunately, optometry's expanded scope of practice legislation is offering optometrists new income streams through medically based eye care services for their patients. So there you have it. I hope this video provided some additional insight in today's optometry profession. Despite the potential downsides that we discussed, I'm still very pro-optometry and highly recommend this profession to anyone interested. And if you're still on the fence about pursuing a career in optometry, shadow or observe your local optometrist, as well as those in a variety of other clinical settings. This will give you a better idea of what the profession is like. Also, reach out to any school or college of optometry you may be interested in attending and see if you can connect with some of the students to find out what their program is like as well. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. If you prefer to connect over email, I left my address in the description below as well. For more videos on eye health and optometry, check out the other videos on our channel and subscribe. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.